for all of you teachers who have a number line in your classroom and use it to teach addition and subtraction, I want to recommend a sequence to teach your students. It's Bernardo Recommends Sequence, and here is how it goes. Each step, you're going to be stepping on the number line. On the first move, you're going to be stepping one space. On the second move, two spaces. On the third move, three spaces. But I'm not telling you which direction. That's where it gets interesting. You start off at zero. You can never go negative. So your first step is length one, so it has to be in the positive direction. So let's do that. Your second step, you're going to be moving two. Well, where, it's, where is it going to go? Well, it can't go to one minus two, because that would be minus one. So you can't do that. So it would have to be one plus two, that's going to be three. So that will go there. Now, the next one is three. So we could go three minus three, that would be zero, or three plus three, that would be six, which is correct. Three plus three is, is correct because you can never revisit a number that you've already been at by moving to the left. Okay, so we're if we were to do 3 minus 3 equals 0, that would be moving to the left on the number line, and we'd be revisiting a number. That's not acceptable. So we have to go in the other direction, and we are at 6. Now we're needing to add or subtract 4. We always try to move to the left first. So can we move to the left now? Yes, we can. So 6 minus 4 is going to be equal to 2. Now we're going to get 5. Can we move to the left? No. 2 minus 5, that would be minus 3. We don't use negative numbers here. So that will give us 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. Now we're at our sixth step. So we first of all try to move to the left. Can we do 7 minus 6? It's positive, so that would be equal to 1. But we've already visited 1, so we cannot do that. We have to move to the right. So that would be 7 plus 6, and we're at 13. Now, we need to do, we're at step 7. If we do 13 minus 7, what are we going to get to? We're going to get to 6. That didn't work. We end up at 20. You can see we keep on going here, and it's just there's little patterns that come up like this. And yet this sequence is extremely hard to get a handle on. I'm going to get you to find the next answer. So we're at 25 right now, and we need to step 18. We're at step 18, so you either have to go 18 to the left or 18 to the right. Which is it? So try to figure it out. The correct answer is 18 to the right, and we are at 43. The sequence keeps on going, keeps on going, and the unsolved problem of mathematics here, you know I love unsolved problems. The unsolved problem is, do you visit all of the numbers on this number line? Well, for example, now we haven't visited 4 and 5, but if you go for long enough, I think you will probably visit them, but it's not obvious that you're going to visit them all. So unsolved problem of mathematics and just a joyous way to use your number line. Older students who are learning both positive and negative integers definitely need a recommend sequence that goes into the negative integers as well. I imagine that Bernardo Recommend in his dreams, has always wanted to be a wrecker ball. Here you can start at any integer. So we're going to start at 2. And you're always trying to jump over 0 or to move in the direction of 0 if you can. Again, the first move is going to be 1. The second move, 2 third move, three. So the first move, he wants to move in the direction of zero, so we can do that. We can go to one. Next, two. Yeah, we can still move in 
the left direction here, jumping over zero. There we go. And now he wants to move um, to the right. Uh, it's three is the count. Can we move to the right? No, because here um, minus one plus three would be two, and we've already hit two. So we have to keep on moving to the left. Drats. Okay. Minus four. Now the sequence is four. Four minus four, you can hit zero exactly, and we've won. So that's where the sequence stops. So for two, it took us four steps to get to zero, which is the objective. Let's look at the same sequence again, starting from two. So we can add or subtract one, but we want to go in the direction of zero, so we subtract one, we get to one. Again, we want to go in the direction of zero, we can add or subtract two this time, we want to subtract 2. Now we are at minus 1. We want to add or subtract 3. We want to add 3 because uh, we again want to go in the direction of 0 and we're at minus 1 so we want to get positive but we can't get positive so we have to go in the opposite direction and that means minus 3 again. Okay we are at minus 4. We want to go in the direction of 0 that's plus 4 and we hit 0 right on the nose and we've won. We can choose any integer to start. So for example, if we start with the integer 6, then that's going to be 6, 5, 3, and 0. We're going to hit 0 immediately. Not all integers are that fast. If we start with 9, for example, that is the list that we have to do. Let's look at 9 on the number line. So we start off with 9. We want to move towards 0. We want to move towards 0 again. Step 2. Step 3. Step 4. Step 5, step 6, step 7, step 8. Step 9 is going to be a problem. We can't jump over 0. We have to go the opposite direction. Step 10 is going to be a problem. We want to go towards 0, but we can't. We have to move away from it. Step 11, step 12, step 13, 14. Let's do it with 11. We're now at 27. The step that we have to take now is 24 long. Can we go to the left, towards zero? We'd like to, but we can't because it's already full. So we have to step away, but that's going to put us at 51, which we've already visited. Now there's no rule that says that we can't visit 51 twice if we're going away from zero. And the same, uh, that was the same for the recommend sequence. If we were stepping towards the right, there's no rule that we can't land on something that's already been hit. But let's add a little flavor here and say that that unfortunately means that we've just destroyed a house on 51. So it's a disaster, but um, it's kind of an interesting disaster. There we go. We've destroyed it. Now what do we do? Well, we, we continue. So we're at 51. Now we have 25 as our step length. We can go there. We're at 26. And our step length is 26, which means we can get back to zero and we've won. Too bad about that house. Starting with house number 11, it's taken us 26 swings of the wrecker ball to destroy house number zero. Starting with different numbered houses, it takes us a different amount of time. For example, we've already seen that 9, if we start at house number 9, that it took us 14 swings of that wrecker ball to destroy house number 0. Some numbers get totally out of hand, so you have to be cautious. You certainly don't want to assign house number 7 as homework or even a classroom activity. It, that would take students a year to... to to solve that one. These are the uh, houses, if you start on those houses, you're going to end up demolishing houses that you don't want to on your way to getting to zero. The overall pattern is complex. 
but there is structure there. For example, if you look at starting with houses that are triangular numbers, like 0, 1, 3, 6, 10, and 15, well, starting there, you're very rapidly going to get to 0. So and that's going to be an interesting bit of structure for your students to encounter. These are the house numbers that I'd recommend starting with. So for example, you could experiment with giving house number 8 or house number 9 to your students. You'll see that there is some more symmetry there. Notice that those only differ by 2. And you'll notice that 26 and 27, um, that the number of swings of that record ball only differ by 2. That is not coincidence. So that is something that's nice to explore. Enjoy this sequence, and thanks again to Bernardo Recaman.